Now let's talk about Cameron Brink. She got busy in the Pac-12 title game versus the Trojans. In the last game versus USC, she dropped 19 points, 15 boards, 8 blocks, looking to repeat that performance. This is my favorite part about her game, her confidence to shoot the three ball. She's only shooting it at 29%, but she still at least takes them and it helps spread the floor. She's a little too unselfish for my liking because she's turned into a well-balanced player, able to play at all levels on offense, and she can put the ball on the floor as you see her get the end one. She doesn't really dribble the ball up the court, so I'm reluctant to call her a unicorn, but at her height and scoring potential, yeah, she could max out as one of the greats. I only question why her dominance hasn't translated to more wins in the Pac-12. They've lost to some of the top teams this year, but her ability to block shots is top level. Six blocks in this game to go along with 10 rebounds. She had three of Stanford's only four offensive rebounds, and when she's doing this, spinning off the block, I think that's when she's at her best. Declaring for the WNBA draft was a good decision for her. She's probably gotten confirmation from the Sparks she'll be drafted at number two, but even if she hasn't, I'm sure she's tired of being in college. And Nayel gonna follow her anywhere she goes, and that's what y'all need to understand. These girls do not want to stay in college, they want to get out on their own and be women and travel the country. The benefit of the WNBA, you still get to travel and see the country and go to cities you've probably never been in. She's performed at an extremely high level, and I think with some WNBA talent around her, her game can grow even more. And she did win her freshman year, so we're not gonna act like she's not a winner. Juju Watkins didn't have her best game against Stanford. She didn't score at all in the first half, and she scored under 10 points for the first time this year. Before this game, 15 was her lowest scoring game of the year. Juju Watkins was out there looking like a Floyd Mayweather opponent. She couldn't hit nothing. 2 of 15 from the field. However, she did space the floor and made some nice passes. Mackenzie Forbes scored 26 points to lead the Trojans. Rhea Marshall, who was matched up with Cam Brink, grabbed 18 rebounds to go along with 10 points. Juju's first bucket was that circus shot there. Her second one came there at the end of the game. Left hand finish on the break, Pac-12 champ. Kiki Arioffin put on an offensive display that was fit for a queen. Los Angeles, California's own. Can you believe she was a four-star recruit? Her jump side is smooth like a spread of strawberry jam. She held it together in this game for the Cardinals scoring 18 points and grabbing seven rebounds. Shot nine of 17 from the field, and I still can't explain how they lost this game. The game plan worked. They didn't let Juju go off like she did last game when she dropped 51 on their head. But this girl had the jumper going. She was locked and loaded. She was directing traffic. She or Cami, however, couldn't keep Rhea Marshall off the glass. Stanford only had four offensive rebounds while USC had 17. This wasn't really a game USC cruised from start to finish. <laughs> 